What's up beautiful people, this is Mike from My Guess Wall and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can do the calibration on the LG OLED C1 2021 model by yourself and I'm going to be breaking it down for you guys what do you exactly need in order to do the calibration on your own LG OLED TV. This can be done, this method can be applied on all the LG OLED 2020 and 2021 models. We have specifically here LG OLED C1 and we're going to be doing the calibration on the HDR cinema mode. So make sure to like this video so that it can go to more people like you who are interested in doing the calibration by themselves at home and want to save money. So I'm going to be digging into all of that. And now before any delay, let's just talk about what do you need. So you need a Kalman Home for LG software, which is $145. So it comes with the bundle where you can buy the colorimeter from themselves, but it's going to cost you $795 for the C6. But what I'm using actually right here is the Pro Plus model of the X-Ride. So this right here on the left side is the X-Ride iDisplay Pro Plus. So I use it because it can go up to 2000 nits. So if you are trying to do the, um, you know, the calibration later on for, a, for the LED TV, which goes to like 1500 nits, 1400 nits, so it's going to be useful. And you need a laptop to do the calibration because you're going to install the software. So my calorie meter that I use, I display pro plus that I bought in March, 2021 for $300 plus tax. So if you want to do the calibration and return it at Amazon, I mean, it's up to your, up to you, your discretion, if you want to save money there. So it's going to cost you only $145, but if you want to keep the equipment, it's going to cost you $445. So that's the total cost, but this equipment is yours. You can do calibration as much as you want on any picture mode at any given time. All right, guys. So this is the first step that you have to do is download this HDR file in the USB and plug it into the TV and play this file so that it can trigger the HDR mode. And then you have to go and select the HDR mode that you're trying to calibrate. I'll put the link in the description for this video file so you can download it and put it in the USB and you can do this. So my cinema mode right now is calibrated. So I'm going to go back to the uh, settings and reset this picture mode because um, I want to make sure that I show you guys how it is out of the box uh, in the factory setting. So I have reset it. Now it's to the default picture mode. And you can see my color meter, my iDisplay One Pro Plus is sitting right there on the TV in the middle because that's where you're, you're going to have your pattern uh, generator is going to push that 10% window for the brightness and its calculation and all that. All right, so now the second step would be to get that software running on the laptop or PC, whatever you have, and then you can do the pre and post calibration. So now let's get into the software side. All right, guys, so this is the LG AutoCal home screen by Kalman software. And then you can see that we have the OLED calibration available, but we're going to be switching the SDR to HDR because that's what we are trying to do here. And then we have to go and click on find meter. As you can see, it already picked up my x Rite one display retail, which is x Rite one display pro plus connected via USB port to the laptop. And it is using the raw XYZ profile. We're going to keep it at raw XYZ profile. We're not going to choose the OLED uh, RGB because it's not going to do the right calibration. So keep it at raw XYZ. And then we have to find our source. So find sources, we have to connect to the LG OLED C1. But as soon as you click on that, it will bring this pop-up menu. But I had to get the screenshot because my software couldn't capture that another window popping up. So you have to select LG and then the model will be 2021. In my situation here, it shows the 2018 model because it's the uh, software. You know, I got it from the website. This pop up didn't show on my screen recording, but it was 2021 Alpha 9 OLED C1, G1 and Z1. So then you have to put the IP address for the TV. Now to find the IP address of the TV, you have to actually go to these settings and find it out. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And you have to put the IP address here. And then it's going to show some digits on your TV that you have to put in the dialog box, which is going to pop up next, which is on the screenshot. So this is how you go and get the IP address of your TV. You have to go to the settings and then you're going to head down to general and then you have to go to the network. Now you have two different networks, wired or Wi-Fi. Mine is connected to Wi-Fi, so I'm going to go there. 
and it's connected to my ZMK home. I'm gonna click on the other network and go to the advanced settings. And that's where I'm gonna have my IP address, MAC address and default gateway and stuff. But we have to just get the IP address and put it in that box and then it's gonna display some code on your TV screen that you have to put in the dialog box on the software on your laptop. All right guys, so as soon as our meter and the display is connected, we're gonna make sure that we are in the right variables for our calibration. We are in the HDR 2020, that's good. The REC 2020 is a color space. Gamma formula that we have is SD2084 HDR PQ. White point, we have D65. Now D65 is the standard color temperature, which is the 6500 Kelvin temperature. So we're gonna be achieving that with our calibration. Now we're gonna click on next and click on the series button to get the pre-calibration measurements. So this is gonna show us what is the pre-calibration our uh, HDR cinema looks like. All right guys, so now the meter is on the TV screen and taking these measurements, which are the pre-calibration. And you can see that our maximum error, our average error is growing and you can see the RGB balance. So keep an eye on the middle part where we have the RGB balance and it's literally all over the places. So this is what we're gonna do now. We're gonna be clicking on the next and we're gonna be calibrating this, the HDR cinema mode. And then we're gonna compare the pre-calibration and the post-calibration. All right, so now we have to click on the next in order to start our calibration, the AutoCal. So as soon as we click next, we have to find our LG display. All you have to do is just click on it because we already gave it the permission to connect via IP address. So you'll have to put the IP address of your TV again here and then you'll be connected to your display control. So your TV will be ready for calibration push from the software. And as soon as you do that, after that, the second step would be we have to reset completely the picture mode, which we have already on the TV. So we're gonna go and click on full DDC reset. And it's gonna re. All right, so now we're gonna hit uh, next and start our calibration process. And we're gonna double check everything that it's in the HDR cinema, HDR is on, and color space is BD2020. And uh, that's what you're gonna make sure because you don't wanna hit right now the HDR. Uh, cinema home mode. So make sure that you're using the right one. And then we have the enable calibration, which is on. So we're gonna go next. And now here we have to click on the auto cal button, which is right next to that one, two, three button. We're gonna click on that and it's gonna start doing this process. This usually takes about 30 to 31 minutes to complete. So I'm gonna fast forward it and then I'm gonna show you guys the uh, pre and post calibration that how much difference does it make before and after for the RGB balance and also for the color space. There are some colors that it's gonna be pushing and taking those measurements and you're gonna see how much difference it's gonna make. So I'm gonna fast forward it and then see you on the uh, analysis side. All right guys, you can see here in the calibration process that the grayscale multipoint calibration, it is trying to keep it to the level as possible for the RGB balance. And that's what you want from the calibration, the right balance. So we are getting there where we have this uh, uh, delta under 0 0.5, that's what our target is. And um, once we do the post calibration, we should be able to see this balance. That's gonna verify that we have the right calibration done. And before we do that, after the grayscale calibration, we have the color space and then we have to do the tone curve. And then it's gonna be the end of calibration and we're gonna do our post calibration verification and then side by side. 
So now we're gonna look at our color space. As you can see that this is gonna be handling that BD 2020, the REC 2020. So we're gonna click on the AutoCal and it's gonna do the color space calculation for us. All right guys, so now our color space calibration is done. We're gonna hit next and then we're gonna have to do our tone curve calibration here. So we're gonna click next and then it's gonna bring up the uh, options for us to measure the peak luminance of the TV. So we're gonna hit on the peak luminance and then whatever the numbers we're gonna get from this peak measure, we're gonna have to put that in the luminance at the top where it says 700. We're gonna have to put this 696 uh, point one, and then we're gonna hit next. So this will complete our calibration. Then we're gonna have to look at what is our pre and post calibration. And it is recommended by the portrait display to change the roll of points from 70 to 50, and then roll of point two from 60 to 40, and then the last one, the roll of point three from 50 to 30. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna bring the roll of point one from 70 to 50, and then roll of point two from 60 to 40, and then roll of point three from 50 to 30. All right guys, so now our calibration is done. So we're gonna disable our calibration and we're gonna have to click on this box right here. And as soon as this is done, we're gonna have to go and click next for our post calibration verification. So as soon as you click on that, it's gonna take a couple of minutes and you have to click on this button for series and um, that is the square floppy kind of disk looking button. And as soon as you click on that, now it's gonna take the post calibration measurements for you. All right guys, so this is the pre post calibration comparison and you can see our pre calibration. It was totally off and you can look at the blue shooting to the sun and then we have the red and green um, not getting there where it should be. So the balance was totally off. And then you're looking at the RGB balance after the calibration, how it is parallel to each other. That's how it should be when it is calibrated. And also you can look at the uh, the each individual color calibration here where you can see how light skin, gray, purple, blue, and yellow, green, all whole sort of colors. We were having Delta way more than like five and we were getting around over 10 in Delta for grayscale. So now you can see that our Delta is way under 0 0.5 and uh, the color calibration is completed. So now I'm gonna go and show you guys which picture mode is actually most accurate if you don't wanna do all this hassle or do the calibration by yourself. Maybe it look like you know it's too much, but when you're doing it yourself, the AutoCal is actually the most easiest one to do. So I'm gonna show you if you don't wanna do all this, which picture mode is actually the most accurate out of the box. All right guys, so this is the HDR filmmaker mode and in the filmmaker mode, uh, when I took the pre-calibration measurements through the Kalman software, this was the most accurate out of the all picture modes that we have in the LG OLED C1. In this one, we had the RGB balance, which was not really off the charts, it was keeping it together. So if you're looking for something that is, uh, you know, the accurate out of the box, and it performs, you know, the way your purist needs are out there, you want that color accuracy, I'll say that you should use the filmmaker mode. It's gonna be a little darker picture mode, not so many people like that, but if you want that accuracy and you want that creator's intent to be there, this was doing good job. You can see the chart there for the RGB balance, it was keeping it together, and our average error was just 1.4, 1.5, and it was not as crazy as it was for the home cinema and the cinema mode. So if you're looking for something you don't wanna calibrate, go for the filmmaker mode guys. And that's all I have from this video. Make sure to hit the like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you in more videos and I'm gonna be working on the LG OLED G1 video soon. So expect that before the weekend. And stay safe and I'll see you in another one. Until then, peace out.